So hello everyone, welcome to today's class. Today we are going to learn about the sorting operation that could be performed on arrays. So having a definition of sorting would be um, sorting is in an array means arranging the elements of the array in a certain order. Now this certain order, as we all know, can be either ascending or descending. Uh, sorting arrays are really important because as we helps in other functionalities, but also in order to find the highest value or the frequency of numbers. For example, if you have a huge array and you need to find what is the highest value or what is the least value. If the array is sorted, your work is done really faster. It also helps you to find the number of frequency of the particular element which has been repeated. Since if you have a sorted array, if those same uh, elements are repeating again and again, consequently, that many times the elements have been repeated. So it becomes a little easier for us to process the data when we have it in the sorted order. Okay. Next, um, these are the variety of sorting algorithm that are available to us. The first one being the selection sort, next is bubble sort, insertion, shell, heap, counting, radix, bucket, merge, and quick sort. So in today's class, we will be learning about the first three, selection sort, bubble sort, and insertion sort. Now, what is this selection sort exactly? The, uh, in selection sort, what happens is the smallest element is selected from the unsorted array. And that is swapped to the leftmost element and the element becomes a part of the sorted array. So what you do is you have an array, you find the least element of that array, then you swap it with the position. Um, so I assume we, if we solve an example, that will be much effective. So this is the algorithm of how an array has been sorted using selection sort. First, uh, the location, the... Second. So the first, you know, the location zero, the index zero has been assigned to the variable min. Now min will store the uh, minimum, the least element which we need to sort. Then the minimum, search the minimum element in the list. So the first, uh, location is assumed to be as the minimum element. Then the search iteration goes on from that element to the end of the array. And then we decide which is the least element actually present in the array. Um, let us see this with an example here. So consequently, we'll just go back and retrace the algorithm. Here, we have considered this array of starting from index one to index nine. Here we need to know that we are using two iterations and that is why we are using two variable iterations. That is iteration variable I and variable J. So what is happening is in the first step, your, uh, as we said in the previous uh, slide, previous algorithm, your first element has been, an, uh, your first element, that is 65, is assigned to be the minimum value. That is why i is initialized to zeroth index. Now there's another variable j. What j does is it iterates. Now j goes and compares uh, from the zeroth index to n minus one or to the last element of the array. So your 65 is then compared with 75, then compared with, uh, sorry, uh, 60 is there. 65 is then compared with 70, then 75, 80, 50, 60, 55, 85, and 45. So uh, uh, let us assume if 45 was in fifth position. So what it does is it compares everything consequently. 65 is then compared with this. So whatever element is least than 65, the smallest element that will be replaced. For example, now 65 is compared with 70. 65 being the smallest, uh, it remains same. Your iteration moves forward. 75 is again larger than 65. So your iteration still remains the same. Again, moves forward 80, greater than 65. Again, moves forward 50. So what happens in 50 years, 50 is replaced with the minimum value now. 50 is less than 65. So your minimum position, minimum value, which was uh, stated to be as 65, that is replaced with 50. So if it is troubling you, we'll explain you in the program. But for now, what uh, just understand that, there are two iterations which is happening. One iteration, your i is kept as the initial position. 
and there's another iteration which is happening with j which is used to find the least element in the array am i clear so you with one iteration you are traversing throughout the array and finding which is the smallest element available now what happens is there is a swap between the position of j and i and that is why your 65 is moved on to the position of 45 and that is why when you come to the next uh, uh just a second uh, yeah so that is why when you come to the next uh, iteration or the next set of array the 45 is placed uh 45 is placed at the correct position okay now we have found the first element the first smallest element in the array so your first iteration is done moving on to the second smallest similarly now your i is been incremented reason being i is incremented because we have already found the first smallest element when your first smallest question. element is okay please uh right now like we have taken i is 65 and we are going to compare the other elements with 65 right to check the lowest number like the smallest yes. number in the array yes but 50 also is small so why is in 50 swap with 65 why are we going till the last that is what i have said we are comparing the smallest element in the array and that is why the min position uh, when you see the array if i would show you in our algorithm we are initializing min to location 0 this min value so initially what we are doing is we are assuming our in a position 0 to be having minimum value but that is not true in all the cases right when we see here till 80 my uh, just a second yeah till 80 i'm well and good because till 80 um all the numbers are greater than 65 now what happens when it, when a comparison between 50 and 65 takes place is 50 being the smallest than 65 your min position right which was initialized to 0 min position that is shifted to 50 now so your min value will be 50 now the rest of the comparison which happens is not with 65 the comparison happens with 50 okay so 50 is then compared with 60 because obviously 70 75 and 80 those pair if uh, those will be greater than uh, 50 that is because the iteration it is because of that reason that the iteration have come till here so all those elements before to 50 will be obviously greater logically thinking So, so our uh, i will be changed to fifty, and then no, we'll come back. I no, no, your i will be kept in the same initial position. That is why you are using a second variable j. The reason, okay, you are not understanding here. Assume, is there a doubt? We are comparing with whatever the element is named as i, or we are just comparing with the first element. i is kept in the initial position the reason i have kept i in the initial position is because i need to go and iterate it and end the array i need the array to end if i uh, initialize my array i to somewhere to, uh, initially i cannot come back backtracking is not possible now for example if there are 65 and uh, there is 15 in the eighth position eighth index so uh, and there is kind of like 18 in the third index so i cannot come back once i'm reaching eighth index i cannot come back there is no way of no variable to trace back that is why i am using a second variable now your i is kept to your initial index initial what is done is i is equated to j your both i and j will be pointing to your first index i so it is as if like two friends have been standing at the same position friend 1 is a reference okay in order so that friend 1 is guiding friend 2 in order to come back now friend 2 is doing the work friend 2 is uh, the job of friend 2 is to find all uh, the least element in the array understood so yeah, understood. i and j initially are kept in uh, position 1 so i uh, now j is saying i stay in that position because i need a reference variable so that i could come back right 
then what J is doing is J is going forward and searching which is the least element. Now at uh, position five, it has found that uh, 50 is less than 65. So your min value, right? The value of min will be swapped between 65 and 50. But that's not N because I haven't reached the end of the array. The iteration goes on till N minus one or till the last element. Now 50, next comparison happens with 60. Yes, 50 is smaller than 60. I'm happy. It's in the right position. So the iteration moves forward. 55. Yes, 50 is smaller. 85. Done. Um, 50 is smaller. But when it comes to 45, right? 45 is then smaller than 50. So uh, J has, uh, uh, so the min value, which was holding 50 is then replaced with 45. Right, the min value which was holding 50 is replaced with 45 and also that I have, J comes to know that he has reached the end of the array. So there are no further elements. So I have the least element in my hand which is uh, stored in the min value. That value is then replaced or swapped by the first index. Now J is saying that I have found the least element. So what you do is let's switch positions. I need not trace back again. Let's just switch positions. So J is jumping to I, but I is holding some value, right? So I is jumping back to J's position. That is what's happening in the first iteration. Understood? Yes. Sir. Great. Similarly, okay. Now you found a first element. Now when you found a first element, you need not sort it again, right? So what I is doing is, see, I is saying to J that I have found, you have sent me the first element, the smallest element. So I am moving one step closer to you because the, the element before to me is sorted. I have no problem with it. So let me move one step further. So it is moving to index two. From 70, again, it goes and sorts and uh, J goes and sorts and finds which is the least element. So J 70 is then compared with 75, 80, 50. Now 50 is smaller than J. So the min value is swapped between 70 and 50. So J is holding uh, the value of 50. Then J, J jumps back to 60, 55, 85 and 65 in order to do the comparison. Now J says that you have compared all the array, but there is nothing which is smaller than 50. So let me go back to my least element, least location that I had found, which was 50, which is at the position five. Okay. Now J is saying, okay, the second element after 45 is 50. The second least element after 45 is 50. I have found the second element. Now let's swap again. So 50 is swapped with 70. Now that is where 50 has come here and 70 has come here. Understood? And this process keeps on repeating until I goes out of the boundary. Now this I write, the, another purpose of I is so, to me measure the boundary limit of the array. So if I remove moves out of the size of the array, then we are come to know that, okay, we have traversed all the elements. So our array is sorted. Understood? Any doubts yes, with sir. this working of selection sort? Okay. Okay, moving on to our next uh, sorting algorithm that is insertion sort. Now what happens in insertion sort is to sort an array of size n in ascending order, iterate over the array and compare the current element to its predecessor. So in simple words, I'll tell you what happens in insertion sort. Uh, your first element is considered to be at the correct position. It is assumed that your first element, it may or may not be correct but it is assumed to be at the correct position that the first element is the smallest element of our all. Then your iteration starts from the second element. When you move to your second element, your second element is compared with your previous element. Okay. You have assumed the first element, previous element here in this case is the first element. You have considered your first element to be the smallest, uh, to be that the correct position. You then move on to the second element. Then you are doing a comparison between the second element and the first element. If your second element is smaller than your first element, you swap or else you move forward. Okay. 
So that is what's happening in insertion sort. Let us consider this to be an array. Okay, this is the array that we have considered. What is happening is your nine in your first step is considered to be as your key element. It is uh, said that nine is uh, perfectly correct. So let me move my iterations after nine, that is five. Okay, initially nine is considered to be as the perfect position. Uh, so assuming that nine is sorted, we move our iteration after to the element which is after nine, so five. Now five is compared with nine, so obviously five is lesser than nine. So what happens is your key value is replaced with five. Now I need to do a swap. Now how will I do that? Initially, what was happening is J was jumping. Um, in the previous um, algorithm selection sort. You had two variables, i and j. So there was a reminder. J was telling to i that, okay, this is the position which has the small, smallest element. So jump. But here, there is only one variable. There is only i. So there is no reminder variable j telling it that this is the smallest. So what you do is, you use another variable called key, which will hold that value. Now you have uh, compared 5 and 9. You have come to a conclusion that five is smaller. So your key value is replaced with five. Your key is holding five now. So what happens now is your previous element, that is nine, is replacing the next element. So nine is replacing five here. So as you can see, there was five here, but now nine is replacing it. Now, uh, when nine replaces five, the value of five is actually lost. The value of index one is actually lost. But in order the value not to be lost, we save it in the key. That is the reason we save it in the key. If we don't do it, our value will be lost permanently and we, there's no way of uh, getting it back. That is why we store it at key value and that one is replaced as your initial in, uh, location. Understood? Um, in in the selection sort, even okay. there we are swapping two elements, right? But there we don't okay. use any uh, temporary variable or something to... That is what I have said in the beginning, stating that there were two variables which were used for iteration, i and j. j was telling that this is the location where uh, the smallest element is present. So let us jump. I was jumping to J and J was jumping to I. That was that is what was happening. But in this thing, there is no J. There is only I. I is playing solo. I is saying that okay, I'm capable enough. I know I don't need the help of J. Let me sort it alone by myself. So what is happening is that is why uh, since there is no reference variable or reference uh, position, we are saving the value in a key variable. Okay. Then moving on. Okay. Now, uh, since your first and uh, second, your first element is considered to be at the correct position. Now your search moves on to nine. Now nine, it is you have since um okay. So your first position was assumed to be in the correct position, but it was not. So you performed swap. So your first processing of the first index is done. Now your uh, iteration moves on to the third element because your iteration starts from the second element till the end element. So it's time for the iteration of one. Uh, now one is compared with nine. Obviously one is smaller than nine. So there is a swap again. So what happens here is, now here, this is where you need to pay attention. There are multiple swaps which is happening. Reason being, now 
one is saved as your key element in the key variable. So uh, here nine is being replaced by one. So here it becomes one. Uh, so wherever here, as you can see, it was one. Now nine has replaced it. So internally, what is happening is, uh, as what happened in the previous step, one was replacing uh, the next element to it. So this nine would be replaced by one. Now there is a comparison between one and five. Again, we are still in the loop. We haven't come out of the loop. Okay, so this is a continuous loop. So there's a comparison between one and five. And we come to a conclusion that one is smaller than five. So let's swap again. So your key value becomes, key value is still one. Okay, key value here is still one. So let's swap. So your one has, uh, so your five has replaced one. Here it was supposed to be one. Your five has replaced one. And one is still in the key element, which is replacing five. Okay, so till now you have sorted two elements and processed three elements in position three. Any doubts? Okay. It's clear. Now, moving in step three, uh, till now we have processed three positions. Moving on to position four. At position four, your position uh, four is compared with position three. So four is compared with nine. Obviously four is smaller than nine. So there is a swap. So nine is replaced by, uh, uh, nine is replacing the value of four and your four is stored in the key value. Okay, so this is what's happening. So four will be stored here somewhere. Now your four is, uh, as we are still in the loop, your uh, value four is compared to its next predecessor value, which is five. There's a comparison. We come to a conclusion that yes, four is smaller than five. So let's replace uh, four with five. So that is why here it was supposed to be four, but five has taken its position. Okay. And wherever five was there, that position. Uh, so here, the key value here, the point to remember is the key value is still four. So four has come here. Now there's a comparison between four and one, between four and one. So obviously one is smaller than four. So there is no swapping. Okay. So your final key value is being replaced, is replacing five and you end up with this array. So till now, three elements have been sorted and four positions have been processed. Okay. And similarly, last element, which is three, and similarly, last element, which is three, uh, is then kept uh, kept as the key element. It is then compared with nine. Uh, so it is smaller. So there is a swapping happening. So nine is replacing the value of three. So three has come here. So three is then compared with five. Yes, it is smaller. So there is a comparison happening and there's a swap. So your five has come here. Your three has come here. So three is then compared with four. Yes, it is smaller. So your four has come here. Five has come here and three has come here. Now three is then compared with uh, one. The uh, one is smaller, so there is no swap, and you have come to your final array. Now you have already processed your final position, which was n, or in some cases, or n minus one. So since you have already processed your final element, your array comes out of the loop. The processing, the iteration comes out of the loop. And at the end, you find the sorted array. Any doubts with insertion sort? See, no, uh, the difference sense. between, okay. The difference between selection sort and insertion sort is simple. In selection sort, <clears throat> you had two variables, i and j. There was a reference variable j telling i that at this position, we found the smallest element. So let us swap, let us jump. But in insertion sort, you don't have that privilege. There is only one variable which is doing all the work. Okay. Okay. So moving on to our last sorting algorithm, it is bubble sort. 
Okay. Uh, bubble sort is a simple sorting algorithm that works by repeatedly swapping the adjacent elements if they are in the wrong order. So what was um, happening in selection sort was, oh, sorry, in insertion sort, that uh, the loop was continuously running, right? See, uh, there was like one, four, five, and three. So three was compared with five. Three was then compared with four again, if you recall the last step. But what happens in uh, bubble sort is, there is only comparison between adjacent elements. Only adjacent elements. You have compared first two elements, then moved to uh, one and two, then moved to two and three, three and four, four and five. That is what's so, happening in bubble sort. Okay. Here in bubble yeah. sort, only adjacent elements will be compared. Yes. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about the algorithm. Uh, in bubble sort, traverse from left and compare the adjacent elements, and the higher one is placed at the right side. Obviously, the higher elements, since we are uh, processing or sorting in the descending or ascending order. So obviously your, uh, the greater element will be placed on your right hand side. In this way, the largest element is moved to the rightmost end at first. So let us uh, uh, work it out with an example here. Here in your first iteration, uh, there are some, there's a concept called as passes. Now, what is this passes exactly? Uh, so if you have number of elements, for example, if you have four, five elements or four elements, so your number of passes would be n minus one. So if you have five elements, your number of passes will be four. If you have four elements, your number of passes will be three. Now, what is this passes exactly? Uh, passes means the number of iterations that is happening in one uh, loop. Okay. Now here, since we are only comparing the adjacent elements, so it's uh, not 100% sure that all the elements in the first attempt itself would be sorted. So you are doing multiple attempts in order to sort the array. That is the meaning of passes. So let's see in your, uh, so in the first pass, six and zero, as I told you, your position one and position two will be compared. Now, since six and zero, there's a comparison, which is smaller, zero being the smallest. So there is a swap happening. Okay, then the iteration moves on to two and three. See, uh, so two and three, there is a comparison. Obviously, three being the smallest will replace six and there is a swap. So here, one more point to remember is now since three is uh, three has come to position two, there is no comparison between position one and two again. There's only adjacent elements and the loop keeps on running ahead. Okay, so um, zero and six is done. Six and three, position two and three is done. Now it's time for three and four. Okay, and uh, by end of three and four, you have sorted, you have found one element which is having the greatest value. Obviously, right, with one pass, one element which is having the greatest value will be sorted and that will be moved on to your rightmost hand rightmost side. Um, when you're comparing two elements, if uh, so what you're doing is you're filtering out the smaller elements and finding the largest element. By end of one pass, you'll have one largest element in the array. That will be stored in your final, final position. Okay? In the previous uh, two so sorting algorithms, we are not focusing on the largest value. That is different in bubble sort. In bubble sort, we are focusing on the largest value. So we are searching which element is the biggest. So if you are comparing two elements, so whichever is biggest is moving on to your right hand side. Na? If your LHS is smaller than RHS, there is no comparison. If your LHS is greater than RHS, you are shifting your LHS to your right RHS and there is a swap, right? So logically thinking, all the greater values, see here, six, six being greater than zero is moved ahead. Now, six being greater than three is again moving ahead. Six being greater than five is again moving ahead. So at the end of one pass, that one element is being sorted. Okay, has moved on to your perfect position. When you complete your one pass, you move on to your first, second pass. Now what happens here is position six, we need not 
sorted till position six. Reason being, position six is already at the uh, sorry uh, the value six is already at the correct position. Why you need to sort it again? Even if you sort it, you are actually wasting time on increasing the time complexity. So you reduce your array size by one by decrement by removing the last element. You are not actually removing it. You are actually reducing the iteration size, iteration size to n minus two. Okay. Um, when you are iterating to the array, there is a condition that i is less than or equal to n minus one. Here, once you have finished one pass, that n value is further decremented by one, so it becomes n minus two. Here again, the same comparison from starting. The first element is compared with the second element. Position one and two are compared. So obviously there is no difference because zero being the smallest, there's no difference. So two and three is then compared. Yes, uh, two and three are again sorted. There is no change. Then three and four are again. There's a comparison between three and four. There's nothing. So by end of the second pass, you have fixed the. You have found the second largest element. So your array size is further reduced. See here, marking. So see this green two positions. That means you have already placed two elements, two greater elements at its correct position. So you are further you are reducing the iteration by again minus one. So it becomes n minus three. But uh, you might have seen in the previous step the array has already been sorted, but you are still running the loop. So you need to do the comparison of pass three. This is compulsory. So the comparison since your five and six are already sorted, the comparison happens with only first two positions. You for you compare first two positions. And the first two positions appears to be correctly sorted, so yes, done. You are further reducing your array to first. You are further reducing the array to one element. When you reach that one element, you say that okay, there is only one element which is obviously be sorted, right? If there is only one element, whom should I compare it with? All the elements I've already compared, so my array is sorted. That is what is happening in bubble sort. So understood. We have learned three uh, sorting algorithms. First being selection sort, insertion sort, and bubble sort. In in selection sort, there were two variables. J was telling the position of the minimum value, so it had a reference variable. In uh, insertion sort, there was only one variable. Um, and when we talk about bubble sort, we are sorting based on the highest uh, value. First, we are positioning the highest value to its correct position. Then the second highest value, second third highest, and that's on. And so on. That is how we are sorting. Any doubts? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, that's great. Uh, so with this, we finish our sorting aspect.